one team, one heartbeat. It will happen for us, one mission. Welcome to the premiere edition of Inside LSU Gymnastics for the 2015 season. Along with head coach Didi Bro, I'm Mike Smith. We come to you from the LSU practice facility today, and I tell you, everybody is excited about the outcome of Friday night's meet in the Maravich Center, a record-setting night there. And Didi, I tell you, the girls came to play, and it was just an electric atmosphere from start to finish. It was everything we wanted it to be, Mike. The, our preparation up until that point, the entire week was choreographed and, and it went exactly how we wanted it to come about. Our, our sports information guy um, sets up a, a, a great media event for us on Mondays and we had a lot of media here covering the event. Uh, we did a lot of promotional things leading up to it, but uh, Monday's kind of a focus day. We, we get the team together and we have a, an exceptionally long uh, team meeting mm -hmm. and our nutritionist came and she, you know, Jamie talked to the kids and, um, and that's kind of part of a, our Monday program. So really focus on recovery after every single practice, every, after every single meet, even on your off day, focus on nutrition, good lean protein, stay hydrated. Even if you're not sweating, still stay hydrated. It's cold outside, but you still need to continue to consume that water and those electrolytes. We do our tiger eyes, mm -hmm. where we reward the kids and, and talk about the, the good things. Ta everybody take one for your, for your GPA, 3.43. There was a couple other three fours, but we nudged them out by, by a hair. Okay, y'all, I wanna go back and talk about the energy bus just for a minute, because at, you know we've read the whole book, and now what we need to do is take the material from the book. And I went and just made some really short notes, and we talked about this before, but Going back through the book, to succeed, to succeed, we have to be in control of ourselves, in control of our emotions, right? Also, we have to have a plan, and I think we have a plan. We, we meet, we discuss what we're gonna do, we set things into, into motion, and then we don't just talk about it, we do what we, we talk about doing. So I think that we just very briefly today need to talk about what are our goals, where, where is this, energy, where is it going, where is it, where's the end point of our, of our journey. Each stop in the end has to each like build up to our one goal at the end. So mm -hmm. like looking at the whole season, of course we want to end up at the top, but each stop we make we have to get better and better and, and take what we learn from each stop and bring to nationals where we can be our best. But um, like you said, staying in the process, you know, each week and like she said, you know, just each bus stop making sure that we're um, learning from each competition and being able to improve on that and pay attention to details and not yeah, just get carried away with the whole one thing, but yeah. staying in that process. Like control what we can control when we're away. Kentucky, we always use kind of like, it's very hard to be in that culture, be in that surrounded, but long as we turn it to LSU, this is our fans. We're gonna have maybe most likely the fan and everything else there. It's very easy to stay in the purple zone and we can succeed going that way. Okay. Everything that we do in this process of building towards our competition every week is all about representing what we stand for, representing what you stand for. I'm interested to, to all of the details that go in on a Friday when you do your walk through over in the Maravich Center. You're looking for equipment, you're looking for mats, you're looking for all of those fine details. Well, and you know, we have a new backdrop, which is beautiful, and you know, it's, it's everything. We want our fans to come in and have the ultimate fan experience, and we practice our march in. We practice how the kids are going to come out of the locker room. All of those details lead up to a fan experience in the Maravich Center is at, right at the top of the best venues to watch this sport. Oh, it absolutely is. And our, our crew down to the, the, you know, the guys that come in here early on Friday morning and, and tear down the equipment, take all of our stored equipment out, bring it to the PMAC. Every detail mm -hmm. is choreographed and taken care of. And we've just got, we've got the best. We've, there's, there's just really not a program in the country that does a better job of putting on events than LSU. And you guys get ready to come out and take on Iowa on Friday night. We'll take a look at some of those highlights right after this time out. You're watching Inside LSU Gymnastics. We'll be right back. Inside LSU Gymnastics with Coach Dee Bro has been brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products, Tiger Spotters, Hair Now, and by Flying Tigers Gymnastics. 
Jesse, what are y'all doing here so early? Well, Dee Dee, we're getting a head start to the season. I know, it's here, and I am beaming for the season. Holy cow! We're ready for the 2015 season. Holy cow, LSU gymnastics tickets are less than the movies and fun for the family. Tickets start at just $3, so make sure to get yours today. Holy cow. You'll have more time to enjoy your life when you're more effective at work. So no matter how you define success, Savin Systems give you the tools you need to succeed. Contact us to learn more about Savin's advanced document management systems and make your office more effective. Savin works here. Call us at Gulf Coast Office Products and see how we can impact your business. Well, you ever wonder what it's like in the locker room right before the meet and you go out in front of 5,000 plus fans in the Maravich Center? You're about to find out. Our cameras went inside the pre-meet huddle for the LSU gymnastics team before Iowa. Let's take a peek. I'm really ready to just have a fun and great senior year, and I'm so excited that all of y'all are a part of it. I just think that we shouldn't try to do anything more than we have been doing. Just be normal. Just be yourself. Don't try to be perfect. Just do what you know how to do. Stay with each other, and like everyone said, if you get nervous, like look at some of us, because we're all together all the time. So like we are each other's comfort zone. Um, this is the first page in our little novel that we get to write this year, so <laughs> let's uh, make it something worth reading. Let's get out there. One, two, three. Beast mode! There you go! Well, the LSU Tigers came out of the locker room ready to roar on Friday night inside the Maravich Center. They take to the floor exercise, pre-meet introductions, the lights go out, Dee Dee, and the crowd really begins to sense that something special is going to happen, and, and it did. We dropped a banner recognizing Reagan Corville's consecutive national championship on the vault, and then we dropped another Super Six banner from the rafters of the Maravich Center, and that makes four. Yeah, it's Dee Dee exciting. It was, not a lot of room left up there. Well, <laughs> they'll make room because we want to win a national championship. So. Well, indeed. Yeah. Indeed. And then it was meet time. The lights come back up, and it's time to get serious and focused on that first event, which was the vault. The Bengal Brass Band, Dee, Dee getting everybody pepped up. They're the best, huh, Mike? They are terrific, indeed. And LSU getting set. Mike the Tiger getting the crowd hyped up. Jesse Jordan leads off your vault, Dee. Dee. And you know she did a great she did a great job. I think the first vault out of the shoot, a little bit of hop, and uh, I, I felt like that that was maybe a little underscored, but it was a great leadoff vault. Then Lomencia Hall takes flight. And she stuck it. Now she questioned herself. She's kind of taken a little <laughs> too long to salute, but good height, good distance, nine, a eight, lot of enthusiasm. It was nine eight seven five, and here's Maya Hambrick's first vault as a tiger. Yep. See that hopping again? That that's the kind of stuff we've got to eliminate, but good stretched out positions. Two-time vault national champion Reagan Corville. And there it is, height and distance. Tiny hop there, but she really scored well and did a super job for the team. Ends up 9-9 for the Tigers in the anchor spot, 49-225, your initial vault effort for the season. And you know, Mike, we're a better vault team than that, but uh, I think it's going to get better. Moving over to the uneven bars, Jessica Savona leading things off wasn't in the lineup last year. Two years in the working right here. This bar routine, Jay has really poured a lot of energy and effort into this, lots of drills, but Beautiful her handstand. handstands were great, Mike. Her, she's got a lot of difficulty in this routine. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful release moves over the bar. That handstand's always one that gets you because you're a little tired right watch there. Watch your double layout. Nice and high, beautiful oh. stick, and she knows she has just led this team to greatness. 9875 gives way to Shaza Marty. Here's another one. She only competed one time last year, and she has made her mark. She has improved so much on this event. And it, here again, it's another Canadian routine that's got a lot of difficulty in it. Mm -hmm. um, her handstands, her body, her line, everything just looks so good. Good release right there mm -hmm. for the sophomore from Vancouver, Canada. But she, and watch this, she winds up nice and high, double front, and she nails it. She knows. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Clark there with a the double fist bump. And then here's Randy Weirich, 9925 score, and you'll see why. Well, look at the lines. Look how stretched up, how tight she is, right on top of the bar, beautiful pirouette. Nice Gorgeous. release move. Another great handstand right here. Right to a free hip, and bail right to the low bar, nice handstand again. Legs together. She's just, she's just beautiful lines. It can't be denied. 
Hand he pushes stand hard right, right up here. again. Yeah. Now she winds up. Nice high double layout. And she nails it. Wow. Boom. Jay knows they're on a roll. They are indeed. And then it gives way. Here is Jesse Jordan. Now, I think this is probably the most improved bar routine. I mean, it's the same routine she's done every year, but it just gets better and better. Her, her release move, nice and high. Wow. Caught it so clean. Yep. Handstand, stretched out position, lock. Now she goes toe up. Beautiful. Back up, nice handstand. Maybe a little bit short on that one, but she winds up. Nice high double layout, and boom. Little bitty stutter step, but it's just beautiful. 9925. And now here is your bar's anchor, and it's Reagan Corville in that spot this season. And look how high. Look how big this is. Wow. Beautiful. Right up to her handstand, locks her positions. Bail, she locks it. And now nice and strong toe up. That chest goes above the high bar. Handstand, and she's going to wind up one giant for her dismount. Nice and high, and it drops and sticks. And one judge goes perfect 10 it to start the season. She knew it. She knew it. She knew she did a good job. Well, the crowd is uh, really buzzing here, Dee Dee. Over 98 points in the bag at the halfway point of the opening meet against Iowa. Everyone's enjoying it. We go to the balance beam in the third rotation, and Lloyd Mencia Hall starts us off. The junior, or the senior now, beg your pardon, from Dallas, Texas, goes up onto the beam. Well, you know, she earned this starting spot last year, and um, it's just hard to, to deny her. And we've got, we've got some pretty good depth on this event. So the, the kids know that they have to compete week in and week out to make this lineup. But, you know, Mincy has worked very hard in being softer, mm -hmm. um, not being so aggressive and, and being able to land a little bit softer. And um, we're trying to get a little more elevation in her releve positions. And here's the sticker for her. She's got to stick this dismount. She's going to go 9-9. Nine, nine. Um, and, and right now, she's, she's sticking them in the gym. Her percentage is pretty high, so it's going to come. Starts off with a 9.825, and then here's Aaron McAdeg. You know, the buzz was all about this freshman coming in on this event, Dee Dee, and you know, Tiger fans are going to really grow to, to really enjoy this routine. Well, it's just I've, special. Well, I watched her when she was an elite gymnast from California, and uh, this event is really the event, I think, that attracted me to her the most. Um, right now, she's training four events. Um, she vaulted for us in this meet, but I mean, front aerial, straddle jump, she's just like a little cat on this event. Look at her. That can't be back layout. Her lines are beautiful. Her legs are nice and straight. Look at that chin pop up. Mm -hmm. Dismount, and a little tiny hop, but I mean, what a great job for a freshman. She knew she did a good job. And has a great future ahead. And then we move into really the heart of this lineup and, and Reagan Corville, who's one of the best beam workers, missed the national championship on beam by that much. And uh, here she is going fifth in the lineup. Well, and I just, I mean, nobody does an Arabian on beam as well as she does. And that one was nice and high. And she comes over the top, she does back handspring, back layout, and then follows it up with a beautiful sheep jump. jump. But look at the flexibility. Look at the, look at the extension in her legs in this leap combination. Switch leap, and she does split quarter. I mean, it's past 180. Yep. And we're working a new dismount. We're going front aerial, then she goes Cison, a little bit of shaky there, and a gainer full off the side of the beam, hoping that um, mm -hmm. just that combination will be a little bit more exciting for the fans and yep. for the judges. And then Jesse Jordan, Dee Dee, she has uh, just been amazing in her career on the balance beam and has really earned this anchor spot, well, and, uh, and we'll see why right here. She, you just can't deny how beautiful she is on the beam. She opens with a side summy. We changed that. That used to be her last combination, but now we put it first, and she goes back handspring, back layout. Her routine has difficulty throughout. Here's her leap combination, switch leap, straddle quarter. And she goes front aerial, and then she turns, and she knows all she's got to do is stick it. And so many times she has saved the day for this team by hitting wow. beautiful beam. And she knows she did her job. 9925 for the senior from Houston, Texas, leading the Tigers to a 49-325 beam effort. Here's Savona. She here again. You know, we moved her from the third spot to the first spot on floor, and she said she didn't care where she goes. And and I told her that here's the deal: you're going to do well enough. You're score. You're going to score. You don't need anybody to build for you. Mm -hmm. She opens with that. Her second pass is what most people do for her for, for their first pass, and she opens with the uh, a double tuck. And here she is with a full in and her second pass. Wow! Look and at it's that smile. beautiful. It's beautiful. And this routine is a lot more playful than her other routine was, and I think she likes it better. Here's 
double pike for her last pass, mm -hmm. stood up nice and strong. I mean, it was as strong as her first pass. And she did exactly what we needed her to do, give us a 9-9. She did indeed. And then Jesse Jordan's first tumbling pass. Beautiful right on the money. double pike, nice and high. And she's got a new choreography as well. And it is so much fun to watch her. And expression is so good in this routine. And she goes front full, front layout, nice and high. Opened up a little too early and, and had a little tiny stumble step, and that was the extent of her mistake in this routine. <laughs> Round off one and a half, punch front full, which is a big combination for her last pass. A little leap combination, and she knows she's, she's done it for the team. The number three Tigers take down the Iowa Hawkeyes in front of a record-setting crowd in the Maravich Center Friday night. I think it was great to come out here and just, um, in front of a great crowd. Um, it was a huge season opener. We had a lot of high points. And to walk out of here disappointed with such a high score really feels good. I feel like we did wonderful for our first meet. And we had some mistakes, but together as a team, we kept it together and kept the, our spirits up. And we can always do better. LSU Tigers fans, show your pride with real Tigers gear from the official online store, lsushop.net. You'll find everything a Tigers fan needs, including jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, and more. With an awesome selection of over 4,100 products, including official team merchandise from Nike, when it comes to Tigers pride, there's only one place real Tigers fans go, lsushop.net. Amazing as always. Uh, these girls, we have a wide variety of faces and personalities, so it's nice that these past two weeks we haven't had school, so we all got to get together a lot more and really bond and get ready for this journey together, and we're so excited. Oh my gosh, our team is so fantastic. We're all so close, and we all love to be with each other. We go into practice and have fun every day, and tonight I think it's just the beginning of something great, and this team is going to do such awesome things. Welcome back to Inside LSU Gymnastics. You know, Didi, it, it, it must be really great to see some of the gymnasts that you've coached over the years, some of the folks that have gone on to other careers, but in particular, those that have gone into coaching. And we had a great opportunity to visit with two at the Iowa meet, both on the staff at Iowa. Well, our own Garrett Walvert was there to take a look at mentor and protégés, LSU style. LSU's Dee Dee Bro, the reigning National Coach of the Year, has more than 600 wins in her Hall of Fame career. Bro has motivated countless student athletes to All-American honors and counts 10 individual national championships in her program. Dee Dee has presided over an unprecedented era of success, one that will continue as her coaching tree grows year by year. Former LSU Tiger Larissa Libby is now in her 11th season as head coach at Iowa, one of the Big Ten's proudest programs. Libby was named her region's Coach of the Year in 2009 and pushed the Hawkeyes to six consecutive trips to the NCAA tournament. Libby's desire to lead was nurtured by Coach Bro. A long time ago, 100 years ago, when I was doing gymnastics with Didi, um, collegiate gymnastics was very different. Was probably from the get-go a better coach than I ever was an athlete for her. And in those times, um, figured out that I could coach. And she helped to drive that out of me. I remember very distinctly after our last national championships, and it was in Georgia, we finished. And we were sad because we didn't make the Super Six. And she looked right at me and said, you ready to turn this team around and coach? And I was like, well, sure. <laughs> I hadn't really thought about it. So it made for a very smooth transition. Um, and she opened tremendous doors for me at the time. As an amateur, Libby was a member of the Canadian national team in 1988 and was the country's gymnast of the year in 89 and 90. At LSU, she was a four-year team captain and was a regional champion on the uneven bars in 1995. Libby earned her degree in Baton Rouge and later spent four seasons as an assistant coach under Didi, helping lead the nation's number one ranked beam team in 1999. I just, I knew that she, that's what she wanted to do. She was passionate about coaching when she was coaching with me. You know, the head coach can, I can be out front. I can be the one, you know, being aggressive. And, 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 and back then when she was here, we had to fight for everything. She kind of learned that, and maybe that's a good lesson or a bad lesson, but she did learn how to fight 
from me and how to how to stand up and 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 fight for what you believe in. Former LSU All-American Jennifer Lyerly Green is in her first year on Libby's Iowa staff as an assistant. Lyerly has more than 15 years experience coaching gymnastics with stops in Kansas, Missouri, and now Iowa. Lyerly earned All-American honors on vault at LSU in 1987 as the Tigers went undefeated at home and closed the year in seventh place nationally. I've always knew I wanted to coach gymnastics um, from the very beginning, but I started in the private club. But um, to move my career on to the collegiate world, definitely Dee Dee helped me with that, and she helped me get my start in the collegiate world, so I owe her a lot for that. Um, and I think she just brings a passion and an energy to the sport that I hope I exude in my coaching. One of the great hometown Tigers in Rochelle Frugier is also coaching in the Big Ten at Penn State. The Baton Rouge native was a three-time All-American and the very first LSU gymnast to record a perfect 10. Frugier was a volunteer assistant for Coach Bro for six years before spending 11 seasons at Auburn with her husband, Jeff Thompson. Thompson, also a former LSU assistant, coached with Dee Dee Bro from 1994 to 1999 before taking the head job at Auburn. Bro's protege became a two-time SEC Coach of the Year and was named the head coach at Penn State in 2010. The latest Tiger to follow in Bro's footsteps is two-time national champion Ashley Claire Kearney. ACK is now in her fifth year designing choreography for LSU's beam and floor routines while assisting in all four disciplines. For Coach Bro, the opportunity to compete and work with former members of her team is very special, and her influence on the coaching community will only branch out from here. Reporting for Inside LSU Gymnastics, I'm Garrett Wolver. Well, the LSU Performance of the Week goes to Jessica Savona, the junior from just outside the Toronto, Canada area. Led off on two events, and Dee Dee, she was absolutely fantastic. Savona stepped up. She, she started us off on bars with as, as good a bar routine as she can do. Then she get, leads off on floor exercise and, and gives us an SEC championship performance because that's who she is. She is a former SEC champion. Um, she did not let us down. She did a fabulous job. Well, it's been a great first week of LSU Gymnastics, and it's been our pleasure to bring it to you this week, Dee Dee. But, you know, we go on the road for the first time in Southeastern Conference action all the way up to Lexington on Friday night. And you can catch all of the action in the Go Zone on lsusports.net slash live, and you can tune in and catch all of the action starting at 6 o'clock Central Time. Now, next week on Inside LSU Gymnastics, we'll have a great feature special on Earl Chevalier, our valuable strength and condition coach for the LSU gymnastics program and that'll be fun to watch. So for LSU head coach Dee Dee Bro, I'm Mike Smith saying thank you so much for watching Inside LSU Gymnastics. We'll see you next week. Inside LSU Gymnastics with coach Dee Dee Bro has been brought to you by Gulf Coast Office Products, Tiger Spotters, Hair Now, and by Flying Tigers Gymnastics Camp.